Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. Interestingly, this is the last edition before Christmas. My name is Sam Omashaye. Today, the program, local and global reactions have continued to trail the rearrest and trial of Covina of the Art Revolution Now protests, Moyele Shure. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, has stepped in and says the DSS can hands off investigation to ensure a speedy conclusion of the matter. But for some critics, Shure is the architect of his own travails. Also, the APC has set up a 10-man reconciliation committee to address disputes arising from the conduct of the 2019 election. Senate President Ahmed Lawan heads the National Reconciliation Committee to resolve the lingering crisis within the APC in states like Edo, Ondo, and others. And the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, is confident in the ability of his men. He says operations to tackle criminals across the country are yielding results. Should Nigerians take his word for it or develop and maintain a high level of vigilance during this festive season? But before the discussion begins, my column, The Comfort Revolutionary, will be read to you. The Shawaree saga shows a state in search of a sage. They set up a stage, filled it with a cast so peculiar, and they treated us to a theater of the absurd. It first seemed improbable, then it was a laugh, then a farce, and now it is unveiling what seems like the beginnings of a tragedy. What were they thinking when they transformed a non-event into a cause celebre? In media philosophy, it is called a pseudo-event. You fake it to make it. The DSS faked a non-event into a storm. How did the Buhari government allow itself to lionize a fellow who cannot even bark like a dog? He whined and the DSS lost its balance, went for a chain and locked up Shuwari. Did they find out who this fellow was before their desperate frenzy? Did they know they were operating a democracy? Of course, they have operated from the premise that democracy must bow to the strong-arm view of state security. Dasuki, Elzakzaki, and others are examples. The man said he wanted revolution, and he was locked up. Where is the evidence that he belched out more than a vapor of words? Did he amass arms to overthrow a system? Where is the armory? Were they in some faraway country? If so, what country? If in Nigeria, where? If so, he would not be acting alone. Who financed it? For sure, he is no Karl Marx with resources. Even Marx winced. You must be some sort of billionaire to overthrow a system or enjoy the backings of men of money. Shuare had just run to be president. He ran a puny contest. He lit no democratic fire. He did not impress with logic, rhetoric, or charisma. He was just a publisher who failed to whet a national appetite. Then afterwards, he wanted a last word. And afterward, he sought the attention that eluded Shuare the candidate. It is a sort of Pavlovian yearning for fame. Shuare never wanted the classic agony of a revolutionary. He called off his hunger strike when he became hungry. His family is ensconced in what many see as the bourgeois languor of the United States. Not like Mengistu Helmerium, who yelled when he was in his revolutionary trenches that the state could kill his wife and children and even butcher them. Shuare is what Nobel laureate Alexander Solzhenitsyn described as revolutionary cretinism in his novel titled Lenin in Zurich. 
So I keep wondering why the federal government would do such a grave infamy to itself and allow a military style impunity to reign when it has nothing to save and nothing to gain from it. As we speak, the military keeps working fruitlessly to rein in the Boko Haram goons making themselves landlords in most of Borono state. Even the national security advisor cannot go to his home village, Monguno, without a full detachment of security forces to protect him. Yet the DSS still is playing haughty in the city, while those who cannot eat or farm or secure shelter have become refugees as a routine in their own country. Maybe the federal government is trying to save face by the act of the Attorney General, Abubakar Malami, who has now called for the files. Is it a transfer from impunity to law? It is evidence that Buhari's men are still in turf wars because the commander-in-chief has left too much power in their hands. A hands-off approach will drop the egg. If they are trying to save face, they should do it fast. Keeping Showare under lock and key would not give them peace. The world will continue to clamor and the man will continue to grow in grace. They already have made a tiro into a hero. We have to follow the constitution. It is the document that separates us from a tribe of savages. Somebody needs to convey to the president that his men are ruining things for him. Democracy does not work this way. The whole world is now going through what political scientist Neil Diamond calls a democratic recession. Whether it is the US, India, the Philippines, the United Kingdom, Israel or Hungary, the world is getting weary of liberal ideas. Nigeria seems to embrace this and it is a bad omen. Well, joining me to analyze issues are uh, journalist Adewale Adeoye and public affairs analyst Achike Chide. Topics we'll look at now. Now, let's look at the APC moves to end internal wrangling uh, within the party. Can we start with you, um, Adeoye? Well, I think it's a very good development. Um, the, this is the second um, phase of the crisis in APC. Mm. We had the last one in 2016, yeah. you know, which led to the exit of people like the former senior president. Mm. You know. Then after the president election, we, we, you know, we started witnessing another round of mm. crisis. Mm. So I think it is uh, a very good development. I've looked at the composition of those that are in that committee. Uh, committee. Mm -hmm. You know, people like former governor of Nasarawa State, mm -hmm. then the senator from Cross River State. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them seem not to be uh, active. Um, they are not actors in the crisis. So mm -hmm. I think they are most likely to be uh, non-partisan. But um, I'm not sure that this team will be able to resolve all the lingering uh, crisis in that party because there are so many layers mm. of problems in the party at the state level, at the national level, mm. and then the desperation of people who want to, you know, uh, contest election in 2023. Mm. And then we have a group of people that there's no way you can placate them because they are determined to ensure that the person that becomes the president in 2023 mm -hmm. It's a man person, they can manipulate. The person of their choice. Yes, the person of their choice. Somebody will dance to their tune. Mm. So for that kind of category of people who are driven by parochial uh, interests, based sentiments, there is nothing, no amount of reconciliation you can put together you know, to satisfy them. So actually, the, 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 the context is very, is very interesting because what he has said now is that we are looking at the politics of the committee again. So the politics of reconciliation. How, how is it that Undo or Edo can resolve their crisis at this time? Where some people think that, well, it is a lost cause. Yeah, well, I think the first um, inclination that we had about uh, the, uh, the nature and character and temperament of uh, the political actors within the APC 
Uh, we got the first glimpse. Almost immediately, the party came to power in 2015 mm. over the issue of uh, election Leadership. of leaders of yeah. uh, the National That's Assembly. assembly yeah. This is a much broader you know, problem. Uh, obviously, and I think one of the significant things is that they moved, you know, uh, fast to tackle the same issue arising again with regards to the leadership of the Ninth National Assembly. So they're mm -hmm. able to, uh, they learned from, obviously, from the past in 2015 yeah. to make sure that they resolve some of those issues. But uh, beyond that, uh, like I said, it, this is a broader battle within the APC involving heavyweights, governors. Uh, across uh, different uh, states, mm. uh, Ondo, Edo, and uh, maybe a few other states, and uh, people like uh, Osito Kechuku, mm. and some other people were suspended and then uh, yeah. have their suspension, restated. you know, restated. But mm. I, I read, um, uh, it would appear that there is, you know, that the, the, the actors are implacable, uh, because I, I was reading Osito Kechuku recently, and then. Uh, he, there was nothing like repentance, obviously, and that can only come from the fact that uh, there are still differences that mm -hmm. have not been resolved. So, look, politics is a, is a game of interests. So there are all kinds of interests. Now, we are looking at the value of these interests to whose benefit are they, right. really? Is it to the greater benefit of the party as a whole? Is it to the benefit of... But I think, ultimately, it affects the party as a body. Uh, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. this is what you expect in terms of uh, whether... People, because it's about give and take. It's about yeah. how to reconcile the various interests that all of these people have. But either way, it gives you the impression that uh, the APC is not a very disciplined party yeah. with regards to what is happening. Because yeah. this thing has, this crisis has gone on for too long. But again, I guess that this is what you face when you have, you know, political parties really that are not exactly powered by ideology. Yeah, yes. Because, you know, because it is the ideas that wield you know, the various political actors together, yeah. you know. Yeah. Very, very good point. In the lead up to the Second World War, when it seemed very clear that Hitler was not going to make peace, that he wanted war, because he called the allies, he said, our enemies are tiny little worms. I met them the other day at Munich. Which inspired an author to say that Wetting the appetite of the insatiable is a suicidal folly. So, what are we having now? Is it a suicidal situation we have with this situation where the two sides are not even looking beyond their own camps? Mm. For me, I think the governor of Obaseke has more to gain if he comes to the peace table and negotiate with Oshomale, mm. who has spent eight years there. Mm. He's a national chairman. Mm. You know, the Obaseke has more at stake, has more to lose, because he's still looking up towards uh, second term. And I think politics is about inclusion. You know, we should be able to learn to bend backwards to accommodate the various political interests in that state, because it's about the people, it's about the leadership of the party, especially when these elements made a lot of uh, effort to ensure that you emerge as the governor of that state. So I see no reason why he appears to have taken an extreme position you know, that it's not even ready for negotiation or that any negotiation is, you know, come to nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's uh, good politics for the current governor to continue to, you know, push yeah. and it's a position that seems to look very yeah. extreme yeah. instead of coming to negotiate. And you know, uh, today, today, you see, the issue they raised earlier was that of the National Assembly in 2015, yeah. Yeah. where they closed ranks for the president. And that was because the president had a special interest in whoever leads or was going to lead the National Assembly. Because he discovered that during the Saraki, uh, Saraki uh, era, it was an adversarial relationship where they virtually declared war on the executive. Now he has this. So if there is crisis here, it looks like the president has, in a democracy, a sort of monarchical power to help rein in any kind of excess of emotions of ego within the party. Is it not that the president himself is, in a, in a sense, not helping matters by not putting, by not um, stepping in? I think you have just uh, made an observation that I believe is very apt under the circumstance. Um, the reality is that um, at the, uh, the political equation, in a way, has changed. Yeah. Uh, the president 
you know, and again, we must also realize that um, uh, the very immediately, um, you know, an administration starts after a political process, after an election. It is not untoward. It's not, uh, uh, you know, uh, that it's not it's not uh, untoward that uh, the immediately they assume office that they are looking at or they are, they are looking at uh, the second term. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, that is what happens for every politician. Yes. In as much as, yes, eight years is, is far. Mm. But for the politician, it is also near. Yeah. So the president's engagement with the polity at mm. that particular point in time, his mm. motivations, his interests were, were, were different from, from, from what is going on today. Yeah. Of course, the president under normal circumstances will be looking at life after his presidency. And one of the things that every president will want to look at is the issue of successor. Mm. He wants to have a successor, a successor in his own image, and that also includes the president. Mm. But it would appear that the forces that guided him, that got him engaged in 2015 during that crisis, are not exactly as compelling and as forceful as what we have today. Yeah. Because you would expect, look, this is his party. Yeah. He is the leader, and that yes. is the essence of the democracy, and the, especially the presidential system of government yes, that yes. we practice today. The president presidents are, the are very powerful. The they are the yeah. leader of the party. Yes. No, you, you know, so, and I have not seen that intervention, because it is the intervention from the president, especially when you have a national chairman that is being maligned, yeah. a national chairman that is being disrespected mm. for whatever reason, mm. you know, uh, you, the next best thing or the very best thing would be a president, you know, uh, getting involved in the process. process. The, the way he will be looked at will be different because, because of his enormous powers, he still has a lot of influence even if he's going you know, after the second term, yeah, he still yeah. has a lot of influence in determining what it, is going to happen. It's not yet lame duck. You know, it's, it's not yet lame duck. <laughs> yeah. That will happen about two years, two years a year, the, you yeah, know, into, into his of, last uh, presidency. Yeah, yeah. So it's still very powerful. But yeah. unfortunately, I agree with you that somehow the body language from the president, that's for me, mm. seems to indicate that it's not as interesting, that the same mm. forces that compare you guys are going to take stronger, care of your problems. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay, the travels of uh, Omo Yele show, right? you see that... Um, after all that happened, the um, Attorney General and Minister of Justice are stepped in. Will that make any difference? I, I don't think there's going to be any fundamental difference because um, the charges remain the same of treason. And uh, up to now, after about 124 days in prison, uh, we have not been able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Omar Yelisho would actually was trying to overthrow the government. To, uh, planning to overthrow the government is a very serious business. You need an operational plan. You need a strategic and tactical plan. You cannot overthrow a government without some level of control of or some people working for you in the brigades, the one you have in Ibadan, the one you have in uh, Abuja, and the one in Kaduna, and of course the brigade of guards in Abuja. Mm -hmm. And up to now, we have not been able to, you know, the state has, uh, you know, has not been able to come up with Any actual of arms. There you know, or collaborators. Not even one bullet. Not even one bullet. <laughs> so it's, it's surprising, you know. I mean, it's a very funny thing that an individual, a journalist, is being accused of treason and there's no iota of evidence, mm -hmm. you know, to convince Nigerians that he actually committed this offense. So I think it has become a political trial. Mm -hmm. And it's so clear that uh, I think the government has almost burnt its own hands because mm -hmm. it, it has become a very difficult situation for the government to establish a case of treason against him. So I don't see what the intervention of the minister, you know, the minister of justice, we, I don't think... Well, when I told him, I thought that they wanted to just say face and just say, okay, yeah. okay, take it over, you guys didn't do a good job, uh, and so on, so let the guy go. And so what it looks like, uh, they're afraid of something. No, the, the, they, the, the response is aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Let me just use that expression, aesthetics. Um, there, there was no attempt, just like Wale has said, there is no change whatsoever from the status of Showare before the attorney general made that statement yeah. and after he made the statement. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. It's the same thing. So what the attorney general was, was doing was to react was reacting on mm. behalf of the government to the very serious criticism mm. of in an accusation of growing dictatorship in the country. Some people have even used the word fascism. Mm. You understand? It was an I, embarrassment. Everybody wanted to use the word cosmetic. Yeah, it, yeah, thank mm. you. Cosmetic is more appropriate. <laughs> yeah. It was more appropriate. You know, so I, that was just what happened. They were trying to react to the spate of criticism 
both domestic and international over you know what happened to Shawari. But the reality, but it tells you that his, 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 the fact that he has not done anything subsequently is an indication again and a proof that what is going on is a tendency. People do not seem to understand what is going on. There's a tendency. This tendency started long before even the Shawari issue. You understand? And, and some of us were critical when we began to see movements in a particular direction. The invasion of the houses of judges at night, mm. the invasion of the National Assembly mm. at, at a particular point in time, the, the arrest, Zaki, the arrest, El Zaki, thank you, mm. the El Zaki, Sambo, the, the Sambo Dasuki, the disobedience of, willful disobedience of court orders, the Aga, arrest of Aga, and incarceration of Aga. James Aga. Abiri, and so yes. many other people, there is a tendency. Bakari. Bakari. These are the things that are pushing the government. The government mm. has no interest. And you see, mm. for the sake of even the people that are in power today, we must tell them that this part that they have, you know, uh, uh, embarked uh, upon. upon is not a part, you know, a part that they can, you know, easily come back from. But this, there is still time for them to, you know, begin to, to look back. at it. Yeah. And again, and for those, most, I mean, lastly, for those who we are busy hitting the DSS and the rest. I laughed. It's not a, a DSS issue. Talk to the average DSS personnel, and you see that they are very decent people. And they, 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 they are gentlemanly, even in conduct. So when they begin to behave like this, there is a body language that they are looking at, that they are responding to, right. most unfortunately. Right. Yeah, but it does not bode well for the, for the good image of this country. Uh -huh. We left this, this part a long time ago, and we shouldn't you know, move back well. towards that part. Well, we'll see how that happens because um, this was a case of lionizing somebody who ran for political office, who, who was not even known by many of the electorate. And if he had called for a, a street protest, he probably would have been able to amass 100 people. Yeah. They have made him look like a hero that uh, he's not. They have it's given just, him what he might just, not even have gotten. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's just um, a, 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 a case of a pathetic comedy, isn't it? You've made somebody... You made bigger, a non, bigger than you he made, was. You've turned yeah. a non-event into a storm. Thank you. You know that kind, of, yeah. uh, that kind of that kind of thing. Well, uh, we'll conclude. Just say one 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 word each on uh, on the Yuletide season. The uh, the IG says there's going to be peace across the country during the Yuletide season. Uh, we have not seen uh, we are not seeing so much uh, tempest yet on the streets and so on. Uh, are we hopeful? I'm not, uh, I think people should just take uh, personal precautions. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's going to, there's going to be any paradigm shift mm. in terms of the security architecture mm. of the country. Mm. Uh, this season is a season that Nigerians invest on themselves. Mm. They invest on, you know, festivals, clothing. Yeah. It's also a season that armed robbers, you know, come up to operate, mm. you know, more than before. Yeah. So people should be more cautious. cautious yeah. They should avoid late nights mm. and they should not just think that what the IG has said is you know, something they need to, truth, yeah, yeah, so they should be more careful this season for the Today. protection of themselves and their family. Yeah, this season brings with it um, the kind of fruits that we are seeing. Mm. Uh, if you ultimately, at the end of the day, the security and stability of the Nigerian state is dependent on, you know, uh, the economic fortune of the country, mm. uh, which the politicians have a duty to, to, to deliver on. Yeah. The IG has made the normal statement. It's a ritual. I mean, yeah. every year they make these promises. Mm. But after making the promises, he deploys people on the, on the roads, mm. on the highways. I think what he will do, he will now do, is to uh, go back to his room and pray that uh, uh, things will happen in accordance to the statements he had made to Nigerians. Yeah. He's not yeah. in a position really to, 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 to say that yeah, exactly. he's doing his uh, job he's beyond him really yeah. actually he's doing yeah. his job yeah well uh, in this season the only slaughter i want to know of is the slaughter of chickens and uh, <laughs> uh, hens and uh, goats and cows and uh, that's the only blood i want to be spilled and it will be spilled innocently any other kind of slaughter is unacceptable thank you very much uh, gentlemen for being on this show and i wish both of you uh Merry Christmas. Same here, Thank too. You. Same to you. Same here. Just before the program ends, this is my poem in honor of Leah Sheribu. <music> they held you on the lie that you threatened them. Aren't you amazed? Your voice, like your muscles, are like rose buds. Theirs can break bones. Yet they fret and fear to let you go. Who, Leah? 
is the prisoner or prison guard. Power is an illusion. You need to set them free. Well, that has been the show today. And uh, you can catch up with my columns, www.samomashaye.com. Also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Sam Omashe. Enjoy your Christmas. And until next time, be good. <laughs>